Welcome to another episode of Siemens NX for SolidWorks users. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the user interface. Before we get started, I recommend that you change your role to the advanced role so that you have the full interface. If you take a look on the left hand side of the screen, we have this vertical toolbar. This is called the resource bar and the icon down at the bottom. This is for your different roles. If you go to the content folder, here is the advanced role. So again, please set that before you get started working in Siemens NX. All right, right now we are in what's called the no part interface. In other words, I don't have any part open. In order to see the functionality available to you, let's open up a part. And there are a few different ways that you can do that. One way is by going to the history tab in the resource bar. Here shows some objects that I was working on recently. For example, here is an assembly. I can left click on it and it will end up loading that into the NX interface. Now that the assembly is loaded, you can see that the interface has changed. Right now we have access to our different tabs and modes at the top of the screen. Right now we are on the home tab. If you go to the application tab, there is something called gateway. Gateway is where you're not using one of the different modes like modeling. So it's a lot less functionality. Let's go back to the application tab. In this case, I will choose modeling, but you can see that some of the other different modes that you have include sheet metal and shape studio. Okay, let's choose modeling. And now we are back to the home tab. And so one thing about Siemens NX is that everything is a part and in the part you can work on different features that you want to create. For example, here we have sketches, then we have common features like extrude and revolve. And then there are a bunch of other different tabs at the top of the screen. There is a separate tab for creating curves. Just like in SOLIDWORKS, you have a separate tab for surfaces. And here we have a tab for different assembly operations, which would be appropriate in this case because I have an assembly open. To show you some of the other different things, let's open up a file using a different method. I'll go to the file dropdown list and then choose open. And from my list of different objects here, I can choose what I want to open up. And one thing to note about this is again that everything is a .prt file and there's no filter for narrowing down to parts, assemblies, or drawings like you have in SOLIDWORKS. So you probably want to use a naming convention so that you can tell what kind of object something is. Let me select the engine block over here. You can choose options for loading up the different parts, but I'm just going to click on the OK button. And so there you see a second way of opening up models in the interface. OK, for continuing on with our discussion, let's revisit the resource bar. And you can see the resource bar now that we have an object open, there are a lot more different commands here. So we mentioned roles. Here we have the history tab. I'm going to go up to the top. Right now we are in the assembly navigator, even though we just have a single part in this part file. And then we have down here the part navigator. And the part navigator has different areas to it. So for example, we have our different model views. You can have cameras. And then we have the model history. In other words, the different features that are located in here. One thing that I want to point out to you is that we have additional columns displayed. You can configure the columns and this very first column that we have here is for current feature. And you'll notice that the very last feature has an icon in that column. In other words, this is the current feature. And this is sort of like the rollback bar in SOLIDWORKS or the insert here bar that you have in Creo Parametric. It just indicates what the active feature is and you can roll backwards and forwards in your model's history. For showing some of the other different things that we have available in the resource tab, I'm going to change back to the assembly that I had open a moment ago. So if I click on the assembly navigator, here we can see the different objects that are located in this particular assembly. Then below the assembly navigator, we also have the constraint navigator. So constraints, just like 
in SolidWorks. They're more like features that you add in order to locate the different components to one another. You can right click on the constraint navigator bar and choose how you want to group the different constraints together. And below that we have the part navigator. In this case the part navigator is not showing anything in here because I don't have any features that were created at the part level in this particular assembly. And so that is the resource bar. There are a bunch of other different icons. If you hover your mouse over the different icons, you can see what they do. So for example, we have the Notification Center, the Reuse Library, the MBD Navigator, and so on. Okay, let's take a look at another aspect of the ribbon bar. In the ribbon bar, these are the different icons that you have available to you underneath the different tabs. So you have the different commands, you can see what they what the different commands do. But I want to point out that there is a more button in every group of different commands. And from the more button, you can choose other additional commands. Let me go over to the home tab to show some of these. So for example, if I choose the more button over here. Well, you can see all the other additional commands that we have available to us. From this drop down, you can choose which icons are visible in the ribbon bar. And in addition to these different drop downs for accessing other different commands, with the advanced role active, if you go to the menu command, we have a whole bunch of other different commands available to us from here. So for example, from the insert flyout, you can see a variety of commands for creating additional features in our parts. There's also an assemblies flyout with all your different commands that you have available in here as well. Okay, for the next part of the interface, right next to the menu dropdown, we have the top border bar. And the top border bar has a couple of dropdown lists. One of them is a selection filter in order to control what you're capable of selecting. And then there is another drop-down list that allows you to control the scope of selection. So for example, right now it's set to entire assembly, but maybe when you are working on a part in the assembly, well, you might set it as the work part and you can control whether you can select within the work part and components or within the work part only. Now for the graphics area, the graphics area is where we see our model on the computer screen. If you hold down the middle mouse button, you can rotate the object. And down below in the lower left hand corner, you have an object like the view cube in SOLIDWORKS. If you want to zoom in and zoom out, you can do that with the scroll wheel on your mouse. And lastly, if you want to pan the object on the screen, well, that is shift and middle mouse button, not control and middle mouse button like in SOLIDWORKS. It's shift and middle mouse button like you have in Creo Parametric. Now be aware if I select an object, for example, if I select this, I'm going to end up getting a toolbar with a variety of different commands that I can select. This is very similar to the mini toolbar and the other toolbars that you have that open up in either Creo Parametric or SOLIDWORKS. For the next way to access different commands, if you hold down the shift key and the control key, and then click the left mouse button and hold it, you're going to get something called a radial toolbar. You can see that there are a variety of different commands here. Let me deselect everything. Oops, accidentally opened up a command dialog box. I will get into that later on. If you hold down shift and control and then the middle mouse button and hold it down, well here you can see some commands for creating circles, profiles, and rectangles in a sketch. And if I hold down shift and control and then the right mouse button, well, that is going to give us a, another radial toolbar. You can see that some of these are for the synchronous modeling commands that you have uh, from the third toolbar. Okay, so that was holding down shift and control for the radial toolbars. If you click and hold the right mouse button, you are going to get what are called the radial shortcuts. And so here's where we can snap to a view, and this one is for going into rendering, and here we have the one for face analysis. So again, if you just hold down the right mouse button, you will get a radial shortcut. Continue to the right of the 
top border bar. There's some other additional icons that you have available here. So for example, since I am in an assembly, we have an option to allow automatic work part change. And we have another icon here for the general selection filters. And again, if you hold your mouse over the different icons, you will get a tool tip that will explain what the different icons do. Let me go over to the other window here. You can choose, you can change between models by using the different tabs up at the top of the graphics window. Let's say that I wanted to create a feature. Let's say that I wanted to do an extrude. When I click on that, that is going to open up what is called a command dialog box. And the general workflow is from top to bottom. So for example, right now it wants me to select a curve that I might want to extrude. Here we have the direction, here we have the limits for the depth in the different directions uh, for the feature that you are creating. So again, that is a command dialog box. And let me just start off by selecting this face over here. That puts me into the sketcher and just for creating some geometry i'm just going to make a circle and locate it over here and then just hit the finish button in order to get out and so now i'm in the extrude command and you can see that we have this dialog box for entering different values this is what's called a scene dialog box so that's something that you will see uh, throughout the interface when you are creating different features also you can see for creating this particular feature we have a drop down list that allows us to choose what objects that we want to extrude but in this case i am going to cancel out of the feature because i don't want to create it the very last thing that i want to mention in this video is that you have a number of different keyboard shortcuts if i hover over the extrude icon i can see that the keyboard shortcut is the letter x here we have the revolve this one doesn't have one and so again you can see if something has a keyboard shortcut or not if you want a full list of the keyboard shortcuts you can go to the menu command information and then we have our custom menu bar and then shortcut keys and this will open up a dialog box where you can see all the different shortcuts that you have available to you so there you have it that is the siemens nx user interface